Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So, in today's video, we are going to learn the Boolean instructions, also called as the bit operations of 8051. This is a small group of instructions which work on bits. Now, what are these bits? The bit can either be the carry flag, so you have individual instructions for the carry flag, or it can be a general bit. Now, when you say a general bit, it can be of two types. It can be a bit of any bit addressable SFR. Like for example, you know PSW is bit addressable. So that bit could be either PSW.3 or P0.4 or something of that sort, TCON.7, etc. Or it can even be a bit from the bit addressable region. If you know in the internal RAM from location 20 to 2F, there are 16 locations which have bit addressable property. 16 multiplied by 8 because each location has 8 bits. So there are 128 bits having addresses 00 to 7F. Those are bit addresses. So it can be any of those bit addresses or it can be a bit from an SFR. So you have instructions working on carry flag, you have instructions working on general bits, you have movements between the bit and the carry flag, you have a logical AND and logical OR which I am going to show you with small small circuits and then finally I will take up a proper exam question, a 10 mark question where they give you a circuit like this, some circuit, I have just taken a random circuit, it can be anything from the exam. So they can take, they can give you a circuit like this where they tell you simulate this circuit which means by software find out the value of G based on the various values of A, B, C, D, E, F. So you are going to do, do this operation using AND gate, using OR gate, using complement, NAND, stuff like that. So first we will learn the instructions, then we will see a program based on that. That is the idea of the video, we are about to start. Now, okay, so we begin with our first instruction. The instructions are very simple, the use is more interesting. The first instruction, set B, C, set B means set the bit, C means the carry flag. So set B, C will make carry flag 1, simple, simple instruction to make carry flag 1. CLRC, clear the carry flag, will make carry flag 0. CPLC, complement the carry flag, carry flag will become carry flag bar. So if it was 1, it will become 0 and vice versa. So what we have is set clear and complement for the carry flag, exactly the same thing, set clear and complement for an ordinary bit. Again, I will tell you what this bit is. This bit can be any bit from the bit addressable region. So the bit addresses will be 00, 0 to 75. So you can write any number from 00, 0 to 7F, sorry. So if you can write anything from 00, 0 to 7F over here or it can be a bit from the bit addressable SFRs. There are some SFRs which are bit addressable. Which are those? A, B, P, S, W, P0, P1, P2, P3, SCON, TCON, IE and IP. These SFRs are bit 18 years. <laughs> So these SFRs are bit addressable. So it can be any bit out of these bit addressable SFRs or it can be a bit from the bit addressable area. So what can you do? You can make any bit 1. Similarly, you can make any bit 0 by writing clear and you can make any bit complemented by writing complement CPL. So you have set clear complement for carry flag, set clear complement for a bit. Then you have movement. This is interesting. Move, your move instruction. So you know you have byte version of move, this is bit version of move. So when you write move C comma B, carry flag gets the value of some bit. Like move C comma P 0.3, so you have taken the value from port 0.3 into the carry flag. Similarly move B comma C, you can transfer from carry flag to another bit. So let's say P 0.4. So what did you manage to do over here? If this is 8051, this is P 0.3, this is P 0.4, this is the carry flag. What you have done is you have taken the value from P0.3 into the carry flag, then you send out the value on P0.4. So let me give you an interesting question over here. Suppose they say in the exam P0.2, P0.3, take the value of P0.2 and P0.3 and them, okay, and them and put out the result on P0.4. Did you understand this? So this will also use the next instruction that I am going to teach you. What you will do is first take this value into the carry flag. Like how in byte operation, okay, important thing. In byte operations, if I tell you add two numbers as an example, 25 and 35, what do you do? You take the first number in A register, then you add the second number to A. So A is your accumulator for byte operations. Similarly, carry flag is your accumulator for bit operations. If you want to do anything for on two different bits, take one bit into the carry flag. Now, and the second bit with the carry flag, the result will come in the carry flag. Put out the result wherever you want, let's say P0.4. Come on, give me instructions for doing all this. Come on, come on. First, take P0.2 into the carry flag. Move C comma P0.2. Did you understand? Now, and P0.3 with this. 
A N L. That's our next instruction. A N L carry flag in a bit. A N L C comma P zero point two. So it will do this P zero point three. So it will do this and and put the result into the carry flag. Now put that result out on P zero point four by writing move P zero point four comma C. So the result will be put out on P zero point four. Please tell me, did you understand this? Now. So that was that's what that's what you can do with these bit operations. You can work on two different bits. You can do an and, you can do an or. Now these are the instructions. What you can do the operations. A and L, C and B. The example we saw already. Carry flag will be ended with the bit. So this is carry flag. This is some bit. Both of them will be ended. The result will be stored into the carry flag. Very interesting instruction. A and L, C comma slash B. Slash B means B bar. So if it was B bar, why aren't we typing B bar? Because you can't type B bar. You understand that, right? You can't overline something. That is not possible. So it is typed as slash B, but it is pronounced as B bar. So carry flag and the bit both will be ended, but not directly. The bit's complement will be ended with the carry flag, and the result will be stored in the bit. Good use of this instruction will happen in the program. Similarly, ORL C comma B, carry flag and the bit will be odd this time, and the result will be stored in the carry flag. O R L C comma slash B carry flag and the bit will be odd, but the bit will be first complemented. Then they will be odd, and the result will be stored in the carry flag. Okay. Now let's use these instructions. Come on, as you use them, it will become more clear. You see an example. Now this is a typical exam question. Bombay University have seen it in 18 years at least three times as a 10 mark question. <coughs> a B C D E F N G. These are all bits. The question is simple. This diagram will come in the exam. Write a program to simulate this circuit. What do you mean by that? You don't have this circuit in physical form. You, your program will simulate this. So your program will find out the value of G depending upon the value of A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, when you get this question in the exam, suppose right now you're sitting in the exam and you get this question in front of you. The first thing that should strike you is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. They are zero or one, which means they are bits. So this is a program related to bit operations. They are obviously they are not going to give you this hint. This should strike you automatically. The moment this strikes you, half your work is done. Now, what do you want to do? What are these bits? Where are bits stored in the bit addressable region? To write this program, you need to have some addresses. So, assume any address for these bits. I am assuming. Assume the following bit addresses: A, B, C, D, E, F. G H I. I'm sure you're wondering why do we need H I? There's only A B C D E F G. We will need it. That's why I'm putting it. Otherwise, I'm going to Z. We need it. Okay. As you do the program, you'll come to know. Let's say A's address is 00, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08. Okay. So A's address is 00, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. H and I are 0, 07 and 0, 08. What have I assumed? One second. What did I assume? Not their values. I have assumed addresses. You are not allowed to assume values. Come on, my friend. If I knew the values of A, B, C, D, E, F, why do not need a program? I can tell you right now what will be the value of G. Our program will work for any value of these bits. We have just assumed addresses. Like for example, I tell you write a program to transfer a block of data. You have to assume that the block is stored somewhere and you will transfer it somewhere. What are you assuming? Not the values. You are assuming the addresses. Write a program to add two numbers. You assume those numbers are stored at so and so location. So you are allowed to assume addresses, not the values. So these are addresses. What addresses are these? Bit addresses. Bit addresses go from 00 to 7f. So any number from 00 to 7f is a valid address that can be assumed. Did you understand the point? Now, what's the algorithm? What do you want to do? First, we'll discuss the logic, then I'll write the program. Your first step is to AND A and B. To AND A and B, we are going to use AND instruction. In AND instruction, one operand has to be carry flag, just like byte operations. When you do byte operations, your accumulator is A register. For bit operations, your accumulator is the carry flag. So what are you going to do? Take A into the carry flag. And it with B, so carry flag and it with B, the answer will come in C, that is the carry flag. Are you clear? Now, store this value temporarily in H. Why? Because to do this also you will need your carry flag free, to do this also you will need your carry flag free. Please tell me, did you understand the idea? So you understood why I am using H and I? You have 128 bit in the bit addressable area, you have ample space. So store this in H so that your carry flag is free. Now. 
take this C into carry flag. You understand this C is different from this C, right? You can see, right? This is your carry flag. This is some C, some bit. So take the C into the carry flag or it with D, the answer will come in carry flag. Your previous answer is in H. You want to NAND them. Now there is no direct NAND instruction, but you have an AND and then you have a complement. So first you do AND, then you do complement. So AND carry flag with H, the answer will come in C. Do a complement, that is complement means CPLC. Do a CPLC, your answer is still there in C. C means carry flag. Store it now temporarily into I. If you want, you can store it into H also. H has done its job. In fact, if you want, you don't even need H and I. You could have stored both the answers temporarily one by one in G itself. What matters is the final answer in G. In the moment, during the program, G could be anything. So you could store it wherever you want to. I mean, I always say, don't try to learn the most optimized uh, optimize code first. This is where people go wrong. They try to learn the best program first and then they find it difficult to understand then they say programming stuff. First get the ball rolling. Get yourself to a position that anybody gives you a question you can write a program. Once you go into that level then the more you, it's a skill. The more you do it the more you will get better at it. It is obvious but you don't try to achieve the best skill in the very first attempt because then you're making it just too difficult for your own self. So this was the easy approach if you want you could have just stored everything in G. It it doesn't matter wherever you store it as, as long as you're getting the final answer in G at the end of the program it doesn't matter how you've done it it's code the whole idea of programming is 10 people can do it in 10 different ways anyway so I'm storing this and I'm keeping it simple so again by when you store C and I again C that is your carry flag is free now you want to do this operation what do you do take E in the carry flag now and it not with F but with F bar for that you have an instruction ANLC comma slash B that means slash F that means slash 0 5 so ANLC comma slash 0 5 it will end with a complement of F now if it, this doesn't strike you no problem first make F itself F bar by writing CPL F you know you have complement of a bit you know that right you can complement a bit you can do that also you could have taken F into the carry flag complemented the carry flag then ended with G there are 10 ways of doing a program the way you like it I just wanted you to demonstrate the use of this instruction. So takes E in carry flag and it with the complement of F. Answer will come in carry flag. Now you want to do an OR with your previous I. So OR C with I answer will come in carry flag. Put that answer in G. Job done. 10 marks in your hand. Please tell me. Did you understand? Come on. Let's do it together. Come on. You assume the addresses. The addresses on the board. I want clear, clear, crisp answers from you. Your first step. Take A into C. Move C comma A, no, you can't write A. A is the name of that uh, pin. You have to use your bit address. The address you use for A is 0. So move C comma 0, 0 H. Please tell me, did you understand? Answer a few questions. What is 0, 0? Data or address? Address. Because if it was data, there would have been a hash. Good. So it's an address. Now, is it a bit address or a byte address? Bit address. Because there is a C. C means carry flag. That means it's a bit operation. That means this is bit address 0 and not byte address 0. Please tell me. If this was move A comma 0, 0 H, then it would be byte address 0. Same thing is move C comma 0, 0 H, it is bit address 0. Please tell me. Is the idea clear? Good. So, you've taken the first number in C. Now, and it with B. A N L C comma B. B is 0, 1 H. Please tell me. Did you understand? The answer comes in C. C is your carry flag. Put the answer in H. H is 0, 7. Move 0, 7 H comma C. This has gone in H. Carry flag is now free. Take C into your carry flag. Come on, come on, come on. Together. Move C comma 0, 2 H. Now, or it with D. O R L C comma 0, 3 H. Answer is in C. Do a and with H. A N L C comma 0, 7 H. Answer is still in C. Do a complement. C P L C. Put the answer in I. Move 0, 8 H comma C. This whole thing has gone into I. Again your carry flag is free. Now take E into C. Move C comma 0, 4 H. And it with the complement of F. A N L C comma slash 0, 5 H. Did you understand this? You have done this and the answer is come in C. Now this answer you will do an OR with I. O R L C comma 0 8 H. The answer is in C. Put the answer in G. Move 0 6 H comma C. This answer has gone in G. Job done. To end a program you write S jump here. 
you can also write uh, return or halt if you're using an assembler directive. I will teach this when I'm teaching programming. Right now, I'm just sending the program. For the sake of this example, just draw a line. That means it's the same. It's basically the end of the program. So that was your program. So this is the use of these logic instructions. I hope you understood them. So these are these are called bit operations, also called Boolean operations of AD51. This is the last group of AD51 instruction set. In our series, we are doing it as a third group. I hope you understood it. Wish you all the best. Do well.